Hello and welcome to another epic epilogues. Epilogues are little glimpses into the wider theatre world around a play. They are often quite reasonably cut from productions because they're talking to an audience who've been dead for 400 odd years, but we like to do them anyway. Today we're looking at the epilogue to A Looking Glass for London and England by Robert Greene and Thomas Lodge. This epilogue features a character stepping out of the play, so the action ends... Wend on in peace and prosecute this course. The cast exit, save for the actor playing Jonas, and then the epilogue proper begins. Off everybody goes. Now, I'm not going into the plot of the play because it probably won't help you very much. Uh, it's a sort of riff on uh, what were by then old-fashioned morality tales, but it's got all the dynamism of a big stage theatre show of the 1580s. But it's got a big toe in, in the tradition. It's all set in, a, uh, in, a, in an other place, in the distant biblical past times kind of thing. But the epilogue, however, is very much in the present day in the real world, because, as the title suggests, it's a looking glass for London and England. The action of the play is an example that the modern world of London and England can look at, and though it's nicely distanced, there is a moral that the people of today should learn from, etc. So, the epilogue functions as a general cry for action. And elements of it can be adapted to suit all occasions. Sort of. As ever, any monologue that addresses the country that you happen to be in feels like it's, it's commenting on the failures of today. You islanders, on whom the milder air doth sweetly breathe the balm of kind increase, whose lands are fattened with the dew of heaven and made more fruitful than Actian plains, you whom delicious pleasures dandle soft, whose eyes are blinded with security. Unmask yourselves. Cast error clean aside. Quite non-specific, really, the opening there. The focus then zooms in from England in general to London specific. Oh, London. Maiden of the Mistress Isle, wrapped in the folds and swathing clouts of shame. In thee, more sins than Nineveh contains. Contempt of God, despite of reverend age, neglect of law, desire to wrong the poor. Corruption, whoredom, drunkenness and pride, swollen are thy brows with impudence and shame. O oh, proud, adulterous glory of the West. And using the word the West, I mean, that has a slightly different connotation today. It has other overlapping ideas, but it still resonates. These next lines feel like they could actually have been written by Extinction Rebellion. Thy neighbours burn, yet dost thou fear no fire? Thy preachers cry, yet dost thou stop thine ears? The larum rings, yet sleepest thou secure. Yeah, nobody's listening, the house is on fire, everybody's going to die. Business as usual. It goes on in that vein, though it starts getting more specific to the time. I quite like the sarcasm hinted in the line where it shows contempt for those thinking the Queen alone can stop London's moral turpitude. London, awake, for fear the Lord do frown. I set a looking-glass before thine eyes. O oh, turn, O oh, turn with weeping to the Lord, and think the prayers and virtues of thy Queen defer the plague which otherwise would fall. Of course, the speech isn't for now, and that's why it probably would get cut, it's calling on good Protestants to defend the soul of the nation against Popish plots, which is a bit of a letdown to the modern ear, used to things being an ecumenical matter. But at the time, you can see this going down a storm. Repent, O London, lest for thine offence thy shepherd fail, whom mighty God preserve 
that she may bide the pillar of his church against the storms of Romish Antichrist. The hand of mercy overshade her head, and let all faithful subjects say, Amen. Go on, say it, audience. Say our, say Amen. Go on, say it. Amen. And perhaps it makes some people in the audience today feel a little uncomfortable. It's all a little jingoistic. It's ringing certain bells. It's blowing certain whistles. So uh, that isn't, however, to say that it isn't a very effective speech. But that's it for now. I've been your host, Robert Crichton, and following are a couple of different takes of the epilogue to A Looking Glass for London and England by Robert Greene and Thomas Lodge. Performed by Fiona Thrale of Dashing Onions Audio. Wend on in peace and prosecute this course. You islanders, on whom the milder air doth sweetly breathe the balm of kind increase, whose lands are fattened with the dew of heaven and made more fruitful than the Actian plains, you, whom delicious pleasures dandle soft, whose eyes are blinded with security, unmask yourselves, cast error clean aside, O oh, London, maiden of the mistress isle, wrapped in the folds and swathing clouts of shame, in thee more sins than Nineveh contains. Contempt of God, despite of reverend age, neglect of law, desire to wrong the poor, corruption, whoredom, drunkenness and pride. Swollen are thy brows with impudence and shame, O proud, adulterous glory of the West. Thy neighbours burn, yet dost thou fear no fire. Thy preachers cry, yet dost thou stop thine ears. The larum rings, yet sleepest thou secure. London, awake, for fear the Lord do frown. I set a looking-glass before thine eyes. O oh, turn, O oh, turn with weeping to the Lord, and think the prayers and virtues of thy queen defer the plague which otherwise would fall. Repent, O oh London, lest for thine offence thy shepherd fail, whom mighty God preserve, that she may bide the pillar of his church against the storms of Romish Antichrist. The hand of mercy overshade her head, and let all faithful subjects say, Amen. Wend on in peace and prosecute this course. You islanders, on whom the milder air doth sweetly breathe the balm of kind increase, whose lands are fattened with the dew of heaven and made more fruitful than Actian plains, you, whom delicious pleasures dandle soft, whose eyes are blinded with security. Unmask yourselves, cast error clean aside. O oh, London, maiden of the mistress isle, wrapped in the folds and swathing clouts of shame, in thee more sins than Nineveh contains. Contempt of God, despite of reverend age, neglect of law, desire to wrong the poor, Corruption, whoredom, drunkenness, and pride. Swollen are thy brows with impudence and shame, O proud, adulterous glory of the West. Thy neighbours burn, yet dost thou fear no fire. Thy preachers cry, yet dost thou stop thine ears. The alarm rings, yet sleepest thou secure. London, awake, for fear the Lord do frown.
I set a looking-glass before thine eyes. O oh, turn, O oh, turn with weeping to the Lord, and think the prayers and virtues of thy queen defer the plague which otherwise would fall. Repent, O oh London, lest for thine offence thy shepherd fail, whom mighty God preserve, that she may bide the pillar of his church against the storms of Romish Antichrist. The hand of mercy overshade her head, and let all faithful subjects say, Amen.